This is a big class, and I just want to give you a, a quick little visual overview of this class. So let's just walk through what we're going to be doing in this class. I've broken it down into 10 sections. Each section is going to be about two and a half to three hours in length. The first section is on cameras, understanding how they work and the different types of cameras. Arguably, the most important setting that you're going to make using your camera is the shutter speed. And you should be intimately familiar with all the shutter speeds available. And we're going to be going through all the shutter speeds. And we'll have a shutter speed quiz for you, of course, at the end. Now, along with that, there are tons of other settings in your camera that are critical to you getting the best pictures possible. And we're going to talk about those in this section as well. Section number two, which is some ways a continuation of section one, is we're going to talk about the sensor. Now, this is in the camera, but it's a big deal. The different size sensors and how pixels absorb light and work with light and how we set our ISOs. And it's deserving of its entire own section. So that will be section two of the class. Now, I probably shouldn't play favorites, but I do have a few favorite sections, and I love lenses. Uh, lenses are just fantastic. And so the lens section is one of my personal favorite sections. We get to talk about a lot of different styles of lenses, angle of view, and this is where we get to talk about tilt shift lenses and fisheye lenses. Uh, and so uh, I think it's a lot of fun here, and it's very interesting, and there's a lot of visuals that we get to learn with in this section as well. Section four is going to be kind of a culmination of sections one, two, and three, where we were talking about our shutter speeds, apertures, and ISOs. And here's where we start putting it all together. And this is the class, this, if I had to give a nickname for this class, this is the aha moment for a lot of people, where they start figuring out this balance with apertures, shutter speeds, and ISOs. And so we're going to talk about getting the correct exposure in this class. Next up, another favorite of mine, kind of related to the lens class, is getting the right focus. And I know a lot of people are like, a whole section on focusing? Don't you just press the shutter release and the camera focuses for you? It gets a lot more complicated. This is actually one of the longest classes. And as you can see the example on screen right now, there are a lot of new focusing techniques. This is a focus peaking that a lot of the mirrorless cameras use. So we're going to be talking about new systems that have just come around in the last few years for still photographers uh, in order to focus. And there's some pretty interesting, fun options on the horizon for lots of us with these new cameras. Section six, we're going back to the gadgets. Uh, so this one we're going to talk about all those different accessories that help solve problems for photographers. Tripods, filters, flashes, vertical grips, remote shutter releases. There's a wide variety of things that we're going to talk about in here. And so this is where we get to, to put all of our gadgets and talk about them. The very definition of photography is writing with light. So having a good understanding of light is necessary in any type of photography. And so we're going to talk about natural light. We'll talk about on-camera flash. We will talk about off-camera flash. And we're going to carefully just kind of step through this process, starting with very simple natural lighting, adding a built-in flash, add-on flash, taking it off the camera, and all the steps necessary to improving and getting better quality lighting of your subjects. The art of editing. OK, we are working in a digital world, and we have to deal with photos after we've taken them. And we need to know kind of what we can do and how we should do it so that we can best take pictures out in the field. And so if you have a good editing system, if you know what you're going to be doing with the photographs, it'll help you take better pictures out in the field because you know how it's going to be used in the long run. And so we'll cover everything from how to cull and rate your images to how to organize your images. And then we're going to talk about how to develop your images. And we're not going to be using any particular type of software in this. Uh, it's just more of the general settings, no matter what type of software you use. Sections 9 and 10 are companion classes. It's a composition. We're going to start off looking at how the human eye sees the world versus how the camera sees the world. Once you have a good understanding of that, then you'll know why certain techniques work better when it comes to composition. We'll have a chance to talk about panoramas. We'll even do a little time-lapse photography in this section as well. Composition 2, a continuation of number 9, of course. We're going to talk about the Fibonacci sir, uh, spiral, the rule of thirds, composing your photographs and getting the most pleasing product from it as possible. And so that's a quick look at the classes as we're going to have them. So 10 sections, each one fairly long and in-depth, and each holding dozens of subtopics within them. 
So that's what's in the class. Let me just re briefly refer to what is not in this class. So what can you expect not to learn in this class? First off, this is not a business or marketing class. And so if you are going to be starting a business in photography, good luck. Uh, it's a tough field. And learning the business part of it is really completely different than learning how to take great pictures. They're very separate skill sets. Uh, I hear there's a place called Creative Live that has all these business classes that you can figure out how to learn it on. You won't find me teaching them. I'm more in the photography field. Uh, so not business and marketing. We're not going to get into any of the particular software. I will mention and recommend a few pieces of software that I personally have purchased and used, but we're not going to be going into how to Photoshop all your images and things like that. And your cameras, most all cameras these days, have really great video capabilities. And shooting video is fantastic for telling stories. But that's kind of a whole different field than still photography. So we're going to spend the entire week, with the exception, I think, of one slide that I have that uh, deals with video. So this is all about still photography. Now, if you do want to shoot video, you would be really wise to have a strong base in still photography because almost everything that applies to still photographers applies to video. I kind of consider video the more complicated cousin to still photography. And I think it's easier to make the transition from still to video than video to still. And so if you are going to shoot video, I think it's a great class. It's just we're not going to go into video specific. The other thing that we're not going to talk about in here is that this is a kind of a general photography class. Portrait, action, landscape. Yeah, we're going to do all of that in here. It's not a wedding photography class. We're not talking about how to shoot water polo. We'll talk about action photography. And everything that we talk about will apply to other types of photography. But we're not going to get into anything too specific. Now, I know uh, a lot of you have very specific cameras, and you're very dedicated to your camera systems. I have uh, mainly used Nikon and Canon systems in the past, and I know from a number of surveys that most of you are shooting with Canons and Nikons, and so that's how I'm going to present a lot of the information. But I also own some mirrorless cameras, and I know a bunch of you do as well. And so we are going to talk a fair bit about mirrorless cameras. For the most part, if you have a camera that you can manually set shutter speeds and apertures, if you can take the lens on and off, a lot of the information, most everything in this class is going to apply to you. As far as the class, the, I think the best way to learn with this class, and I've watched a number of Creative Live classes. Um, somehow they get me a good discount on classes, you know. <laughs> I've got good connections here. And so I watch a lot of Creative Live classes. And my class, I think, is a little bit different than everyone else's class. And what's different about mine with this intro being the exception to the whole class, is that I use a lot of visuals. And I know a lot of time when I'm watching somebody else on Creative Live, I hate to admit it, but you know, I put them kind of down in the corner while I'm working on another project over here. I'm, I'm shopping or I'm working on a project and I got this going and I'm listening to them talk over here. And with my class, when we get into it, you're probably going to want to go full screen with this class because there's a lot of visuals and I have a lot of things timed actually down to the, to the tenth of a second. And there are certain things that are on screen for only two seconds. And so uh, you're going to want to be watching this class once we get into the visual part of it, uh, because that's how you're going to learn the most of it. I'm a very big believer in just, can I learn by watching? And so this is the type of class where if you just look at it, you're going to learn. And I know that I've had a number of people in foreign countries who have really liked my class because their English is not really good, but they can just look at the screen and they can pick up a lot of information with that system. So some time ago, I was asked a question. What would you recommend, what, would, what advice would you give to a new photographer? And this is actually a refreshing question because I usually get asked about what camera to buy. And so what advice would I give? And I think they asked me, or at least I hope they asked me, because I've been in photography for a very long time. I got started, I picked up my first camera when I was 10 years old. I bought my first interchangeable SLR lens camera when I was a teenager with my paper route money. I took a photography class in college and knew that this is something I totally wanted to do. And I got my degree in photography and I have been doing it ever since. Ever, every full-time job that I've had has been photography related in one manner or another. And what advice would I give? And I, to be honest with you, I don't even recall what I said. But I thought later on that, you know, if I teach classes, I should probably have a a good answer to that question. And so I sat down and I wrote my thoughts. And well, I guess I would like to share them with you now. And uh, it's a little bit too long to memorize, so I'm going to have to read it here. 
And because I am one that likes visuals, I decided that I would choose a number of photographs to go along with this. So what I did is I chose 10 of my favorite photographs from the last year. And this is a piece that I call Welcome to Photography. Photography is the magnificent capture of time and light. Meeting at the intersection of art and technology, it can be a hobby, a career, or a lifestyle. Wherever you go, whatever you do, you can take it with you. It's a craft perceived by some to be quite easy. And from a certain point of view, that is so. Anyone can buy a camera and call themselves a photographer, but possessing and mastering are not the same. Photography is likely not what you think it is. Expectations and assumptions are often greatly misguided. Finding your way is really quite simple. Learn from those who inspire you, then take in your own direction. Achieving a high level of success requires an investment. I'm not speaking of expensive equipment. The investment will be in time, effort, and knowledge. And yes, a quality camera is nice to have. For the most part, the gear doesn't matter. What matters is the desire to create. Great photographers are simply experts at observing, recognizing, and problem solving. The attribute most often in short supply is awareness. Anyone can recognize the remarkable. The key is finding the remarkable in the ordinary. While many are satisfied with a snapshot, some want more. They ask questions. Searching for solutions, they push for something better. They don't stop until they're out of options. Pursuing photography is a journey, as long of journey as you wish it to be. Where it leads, neither you nor I nor anyone else can say. What I can tell you is that your path will be strewn with mistakes, problems, and frustration. Your skills and knowledge, once honed, will be your most valuable tools. Your vision of the world will change. You'll see things you didn't see before, and what you saw before will now look different. If that is the path you want to take, this is the time and place to begin. Commit yourself to learning all that you can, then allow your passion to point you in the right direction. So that's my advice to all of you new photographers. And I know there's a lot of you that have been around for a lot of, long time, and you are making a renewal start in photography. And that's one of the great things about photography is you get to restart it all the time. Every time you delete those images off the memory card, you repack the bags, and you go out for a new shoot. It's a new chance to start again and learn.